physiology of food very, very quickly. Um, I didn't assign a read because I was still doing quite a number of readings uh, for these past few um, uh, weeks on food. And maybe we won't do this PowerPoint because it's not, oh, it is going. OK. Um, some of the reads that I've been um, looking at kind of talk about the politics of food, um, the aesthetics of food, and the ethics of food. Talking about maybe if I can sum this all up, um, how distant are we from our food? Do we even know where our food comes from? Do we even think about the farm or the ranch? Um, or do we suddenly just uh, feel as if food just appears at Costco or appears at our market? And we have no idea of the life of plants, the life of perhaps um, the animals that we have uh, consumed. Just the politics, this distancing of not knowing about our food, that we're just simply and solely consumers. Um, aesthetics of food, how many of us have gone through fast food restaurants and literally our restaurants and kitchens have become fueling stations, whereas they were intended to be times and places of interaction and relationship and comfort. And we've allowed even our kitchens, our own kitchens, to be simply fueling stations Hence the word fast food. How many times, it's very, very sad to me to observe a fast food restaurant and you look in the parking lot and they're filled with cars where people are just sitting by themselves eating their meal in the comfort and isolation of their cars. Interesting. Especially when we think about these, um, the, the theology of food. And then the ethics of food. You know, we can get um, more into this, and probably subsequent uh, classes will uh, get into this. But I wanted to um, show you some of the thoughts that I kind of pulled together. Um, it started in the garden by uh, the eating of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. It started in the garden. Now, it had uh, serious consequences, of course, but it started by eating, eating in the garden. There are Old Testament feasts and celebrations that included food and involved food, and they were great, great celebrations. Jesus <laughs> describes God's reign, God's kingdom, as a wedding banquet. Invited guests reject the invitation, and people on the street are now invited <laughs> to come. So hence, he's describing this kingdom um, celebration. Of course, there were those who are going to reject that kingdom, but there are going to be those who will be accepted, certainly invited and accepted. His parables describe the kingdom not as starving, but as with eating, an open and abundant banquet. Can you imagine that? Uh, there was a song by Audio Adrenaline that says, oh, heaven, where there's a, a feast, I think it'd be like wall-to-wall -wall food. Can you imagine wall-to-wall -wall food? Our destination will be this banquet, as described not only in the Gospels, but also in Revelation. That Jesus ate is evidence of his humanity. He ate, and he is fully human. Many of the great events of Jesus' ministry occurs over a meal or food. Interesting perspective when we think of food as, um, as an entity, an element that draws people together where they can commune and relate. Meals have a gathering effect, and that there seems to be a relationship between the Lord's Supper and the unity of the body. So here's that gathering perspective, as well as Jesus' presence. So we see that there are a number of things that um, are included with um, and involved in this theology of food. However, we've kind of had a different take on food with the privatization of the meals. When I think about that uh, lone person in their car eating a fast food me uh, meal at Wendy's, um, Companion, the word companion literally means the one with whom bread is broken. Hmm, companion, the one with whom bread is broken. And through eating together, we taste the goodness of God. Now you should have heard the buzz in this room when everyone was gathering and bringing their, their food items. There was just this high level of buzz. Why is that? And do you think God delights in those things when we gather? perhaps over food and because of food, but really underlying this all because of his goodness and what he intends uh, for our delight. Food makes us happy and it is designed to make us grateful. I like that. Food makes us happy 
more than a happy meal. Food makes us happy, but it's designed to create and stir gratefulness in us, and that it reminds us that we are dependent beings. So it makes us, it's uh, designed to make us grateful, to delight and to express hospitality and community. We saw a couple of weeks ago in terms of biblical hospitality, <coughs> extending friendship to a stranger, and that's very much in line with this, to express hospitality well beyond Martha Stewart, but to express the extension of friendship to a stranger which forms community, where the stranger now becomes our friend. Perhaps that will happen today. There have been those of us who have, um, and professors like this, everyone kind of sits in the same seat every time, and so it helps us memorize and get, kind of get to know you, be familiar with where you're sitting, and, and to try to associate the name of the face. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there's community, simply because we all gather on a Wednesday afternoon in Barbara Food does something. That theology of food does something um, of a gathering effect. Not only physically gathering, but we're forced to, to talk with each other. Um, I heard two voices as I was setting up, um, one helping the other. Do you need help? Oh, can I help you with that? Um, that was just really wonderful. And I'm not going to marginalize that. That's what God does when he draws his people together over me in. So without any ado, that's all I have for the theology of food. And other subsequent classes will have probably a lot more reading on the theology of food after I've gotten through it. But I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Longanel, and then we will enjoy our feast. OK. Um, I'm going to go from the community of this class to the community of the uh, undergraduate chairs meeting. And I'm already late, so I'm just going to be even more late. Um, so I, I'm not sure how we're going to share about our food, but I want to share about what I brought. Nobody has to eat it. Do not feel obligated. I will not check out who ate the food because that is the trouble that you guys have Let me just tell you. I want the food. Um, and I point out the fact to Dr. Jung that I forgot to do takeaways on Monday. So the deal didn't exist. And I forgot to bring to you the brown paper uh, collection of of takeaways that I was supposed to look over in that day. So I will bring those to your office uh, tomorrow. Okay. I will be here until May. I will be back until May. So okay. we can hold on to them. Oh, we'll just hold on to them? OK. Well, I can bring them today. That's up to you. I'll bring them today. Probably yes, I'll bring them today. Um, OK, so let me explain this dish right here. This, is apples. Okay. And if you saw the movie, My Big Fashion Wedding, apple is green. Apple, audits, they all threw it. Um, so this, this, let me explain this. Um, this dish, this thing that I made, um, encompasses many cultural motifs. In the Mexican tradition that I was, grow, that I was raised in, uh, cinnamon is really a big deal. Mexican pastries, uh, Mexican sweet stuff that has cinnamon in it, it just it really smells powerful. You walk in the kitchen, you walk in a place, it's really crazy, and you're there. You just you want to taste it because it smells so good. So this is the Mexican side. Um, it also encompasses my wife's traditions. My wife is from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And when she and I got married, it was a cultural moment of decision. Because my grandmother wanted me to marry a nice Russian girl. Mike, marry this girl. She's Russian. She's Slavic. Mike, what's about you? <laughs> you should marry a Russian girl. So, so I disobeyed my grandmother, and I married a girl from the South. And my grandmother told me, people from the South, you know, they, because they're from hot weather, they, they don't think as fast. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't move as fast as Northern <laughs> girls. You know? But I said, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. So I made this girl from the 
this out. So I, I, you know, my grandmother's enculturation was in my mind. So I took a trip down to Atlanta to meet my wife's mother. On the way, we stopped at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> I've never seen a Cracker Barrel in my life. Those of you who don't know, a Cracker Barrel is this, this chain of restaurants that are fashioned after hillbilly culture. So hardwood floors, and everything is country. They have country stuff, old you know, boots and stuff on the walls, and old guitars, and very country. So I went in there to eat, and I just, I thought, oh my god, what am I getting myself into? I kind of freaked out. Good food, but just, you know, hillbilly kind of country culture, and I was kind of freaked out with this. Uh, kind of find out, my wife is from Atlanta, it's urban. So it's not like that. But I was, I was, was afraid for a moment. And Cracker Barrel serves baked apples. If you ever get to eat Cracker Barrel, go to the baked apples, they are amazing. They are buried in butter. So it is like cholesterol city. It'll kill you, but it tastes so good. Um, so this is cholesterol free. But it's, it kind of tastes like Cracker Barrel, and it's got some fig cinnamon Mexican, and so that's here. So, keep it warm. There you go. Uh, yeah. I'm done. Hey. So, I wish I could hear all your stories, and I wish I could sample all this, but I can't. I gotta go to my meeting. So, okay. And let's get the um, professors out of the way so that uh, yes. we can let the students do their thing. Yeah. Um, and remember, uh, Harmony is filming. Um, I, this is not anything Asian, all right? <laughs> oh. um, but so when I thought about, now obviously they're Christmas colors because this is what I do at Christmas for my entire family and it's layered jello and people will ask, how do I make that? And I said, a layer at a time. So here, here. Um, and um, our family just expects this every year. So while I was in, um, I was gone over the holidays this last year. I was in Jamaica, and so my children, my daughter, was picking up and, and making this. So there's, there should be enough for everybody here. Um, and what I like uh, to say about this is that, depending on the holidays, um, I change up the colors. So um, for Fourth of July, it's red and blue. And um, I bring this, I call this spirit jello. And when I was on the, uh, when I was on the, um, Ultimate Frisbee team, I made red layered jello for our team. Mm -hmm. And we played softball, our kickball team the other day, and I, our colors were blue, so I had um, blue layers. And so it's, it's kind of like it goes with the flow, it kind of goes with the holiday. But uh, my family expects what colors will she choose this time for Easter or for the 4th of July or for Thanksgiving or for Christmas. And so the recipe stays the same, but um, Aesthetically, it's different as we, get, as we approach um, each of the holidays. And again, it's something that my, my family, my extended family, almost expects uh, from this. So this has become um, a tradition in our family. So um, I like to have this around holiday time, and so they are red and green. So that will be here for you. Now I think everyone else, and uh, let's not waste too much time because we all want to dig into this. So perhaps if we have... I have to go, can I take something that's mobile? <laughs> This mobile feast. <laughs> um, so let's just, you know, there's no particular order, but let's just have every food item here um, have its purveyor um, come forward and uh, give us a minute of your introduction and or explanation. All right, who's up? I'll do it. Okay. You can okay. do it. Lines way over here, so well. Okay. Uh, why don't you come in uh, view of the camera? Well, I'm the only one from Texas, so we got cornbread and sweet ass tea. It in no way reflects my mom's cooking. This is like the first thing I've ever cooked, and so please don't judge me. I don't even know if, I mean, are there any, yeah, no other guys are brave enough to show up and bake anything, so. You know. But this is my, uh, That's my Texas for my dress and ST. Um I am one quarter Norwegian and so um I brought this sweet bread. It's called Kringla 
and it's got um, sour cream, buttermilk, um, sugar, flour, a few other things in it, but it's, it's really sweet, and we always eat it with a little bit of butter at the holidays, so I hope you like it. Um, so it's kind of like an egg roll, but it's like a dessert. So inside is banana. Um, and it's really good for the holidays. My grandma cooks it. Um, and if you guys like what you taste, I'm putting in a little plug. Um, we have Filipino Culture Night, which is May 6th. Um, and you guys need to come to me for tickets for that. So enjoy. <laughs> So I brought, my name's Jean, I brought a cucumber salad. I, my family's Romanian, I'm Romanian, so. Um, this is just cucumbers, tomatoes, and um, some onions and balsamic vinegar. And so we just, from, as, I'm trying to remember, just since I was very, like very little, I've just always grown up on this. When I went to Romania, they always just have this before, like with soup, before your meals up. Something simple, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, my mom is um, Japanese and Mexican, so growing up we'd always go to like the panaderia all the time, and so this is like churros, it's like something I grew up on eating all the time, and we'd have it with like tan negra, like black tea, um, so yeah, that's what I brought. <laughs> I made cupcakes. Um, uh, my grandparents are from St. Louis, and around the holidays, we bake all the time. Um, and we substitute the oil for butter, and then we put milk and water instead, instead of just water. So it tastes really good to me. And I can taste, <laughs> I, like, I can notice the difference in like other people's, like I can taste oil when somebody uses oil, because my mom uses butter. So that's what I made. Cool. But um, we have a lot of Hawaiian culture and because half my family is from Hawaii. So uh, when I was a kid, we had this storybook that we'd always read about this little mouse who went into this person's house and they ate Hawaiian soup bread. So it was always a big deal for us when we got like, the big loaves and stuff and brought it home. So, yeah, thank you. I made homemade strawberry ice cream. Um, and it just, <laughs> uh, it just really reminded me when I was little, like summer, my mom used to like, we'd always have picnics at this pool, and it totally brought back like, my childhood, so I was like, oh, that'd be nice. Um, but yeah, it should be really good. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Katie. I made cappuccino brownies, because that's something my mom always makes, and it's her recipe. And so, um, yeah, my mom's cooking is very special to me. So, thank you. Hey guys, um, I'm Sydney. Um, 
Um, so both of my parents were born in Guatemala, so I'm full 100% Guatemala. Um, a staple food um, in Guatemala is black beans, um, frijoles negros. Um, so I made two um, in case it, there's not enough. Um, and basically, we eat this with everything, literally. <laughs> um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, you can eat it with huevos, which is eggs for breakfast, or even with platanos, fritos, which means plantains. Um, I also brought, um, this is um, cheese, it's called queso fresco. I, it's, I'm going to leave it open here for you guys to um, use. Um, we eat this cheese with the beans on the side. It's really delicious, so make sure you um, try and piece of that. Um, yeah, so I grew up with um, beans since I was a kid, and that's like everything we eat when my mom cooks, so it goes with everything, so. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, my name is Katie, and um, I actually made a cake that we always make for Easter. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and um, my family's German, and I'm pretty sure that this recipe came from um, my ancestors in Germany, but it's just like a lemon orange cake. So it's like lemon, and then you poke holes in it and put orange concentrate in it, and then you put pulp in the um, icing, so it's very fruit, fruity and really good. So. Um, I brought these, and I'm sure you have all had them. Um, we call them Muddy Buddies growing up, and then I I found out that we call them Puppy Chow also. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, it was just. That's what we know her kids. It was great. I think it was great. This is great. So. <laughs> okay. I'm Shawnee and I brought this. My family always just called it that pudding dessert thing. Like we never really had it. Before, but, um, it's basically grape butter crust, cream cheese pudding, and cool whip. And it's just something that my grandma always made, my mom makes, my sister makes, my aunt makes. So it was at every family function and holiday we've ever had. So there you go. Hello, um, I'm Norma. I brought, I made um, arroz con pollo, chicken and rice. Um, <laughs> Uh, my grandma taught it to my mom, and my mom is the oldest one, so she taught it to me as well. Um, very young, and my mom adds um, chile chile pepper. It's really, really spicy, really small. It's like the size of a bean, <laughs> really bad. Um, but I didn't bring it because it's way too spicy, and I don't like spiciness, so this is what I brought. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, my sister and I used to make them all the time and like stay up till two o'clock in the morning because we had nothing else to do. So yeah, that's that. <laughs> um, I'm Johanna and I made deviled eggs. And um, ever since I was about uh, 12 or 13, my grandma asked me to bring something to Easter because all my aunts and my mom do and I, I'm the oldest grandchild and so um, I wanted to make something and so ever since I was about 13 I've been making it um, double eggs for Easter. Mm -hmm. so. That's so cool. So I'm Amanda and my dish is very similar to yours, Shawnee, which is very interesting. But um, my stepdad's family is from Pennsylvania, and we went out there one year and had this amazing banana pudding. And so my mom got the recipe, and we've been making it ever since. And it's basically Cool Whip, vanilla pudding, graham crackers, and bananas. And so it's really, really good. But similar. Downstairs, <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, I'm Marcusita, and I made a seven-layer dip 
and I do this every year with my mom for every special event, holiday, so this was a special event, so we made this. And uh, what's in it is actually beans, sour cream, mayonnaise, uh, taco sauce, guacamole, and cheese. And the seventh uh, ingredient is green onions, but I don't want that, so it's not in here. So six layer dip. And, <laughs> and there's chips, so there. Yeah. <laughs> really good and it comes like if you guys know what salmon croquettes are it's like comes in that form and then there's like tamale cornbread which is real good but this is just generic and basic <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry so that uh, well that's real good too like you don't need any honey you don't need our butters on it it's like it's bomb so it's pretty good
Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.